Today we're going to talk about the difference in temperature versus heat. Sometimes we want heat to be transferred, sometimes we don't. We want to keep heat in our homes and sometimes we want to heat up other places. We've used both of these terms, temperature and heat, in a formula. The formula we've used this in is Q. The formula we have used this in is a formula Q is equal to M times C times delta T. And so T would represent temperature, Q would represent heat. So what's really the difference between heat and temperature? Uh, so temperature and heat. Now if you want to grab your note sheet, this is section 10.2 uh, in your note sheet that you may have printed out from Canvas already. So first let's define temperature. Temperature is really the average kinetic energy of the particles, uh, be they air particles, liquid, solid, whatever you're talking about. So if the average speed, now their molecules are moving fast, there's molecules that are moving slow, it's the average kinetic energy. Notice kinetic energy also takes into, into account the idea of the mass and also the velocity of the particles. So if you have a heavy particle, it will be moving a little bit slower, and a lighter particle will be moving faster, but they will have the same average kinetic energy. As you increase temperature, you're cre increasing the average kinetic energy. Heat, however, is more of a sum. Heat is a flow of energy due to temperature differences. So it's a transfer of heat between two objects that's due to temperature difference. So people think of heat as being a substance or uh, contained in something as a substance, but heat itself is not a substance. So what we're going to talk about is the difference between some things are colder, some things are hotter. Sometimes it's a striking difference. If we have ice, those particles are not moving very fast. They're locked in, in one position. They're vibrating. Um, if you have water at 80 degrees Celsius, those particles are moving much faster. So if you compare the particles of ice versus water, it's clear to see they have a different kinetic energy because of the movement of the particles. This is the same exact particle H2 on both these instances. However, if we look at the difference between temperature and heat, for example, if you take the temperature of water, if you have a big cup of water and a small cup of water, they could be at the same exact temperature, but the heat content would be different. Which one would have the most heat? Well, the one with the most heat would be the substance that is a larger quantity because heat takes into this account the sum amount. So you're taking the total number of particles, the total number of moles. So if you call this A and B, in A we have a greater number of particles or moles, and B the number of particles or moles is much smaller. So the, although the temperature is same in both of these instances, the amount of heat or the heat content is much smaller in B than A because there's not as much in B. So in this instance, let's look at we have a swimming pool versus a cup of coffee. Which one of these would be at the higher temperature? Which one of these would have more energy? So rem remembering that we talked about both of these uh, as being a little uh, a distinction between these, the pool is actually the winner in one category. The pool actually has the most energy because for the pool, you're looking at number of particles. And so there's more particles that have more energy. So if there's a greater number of particles and it's such a, a, a vastly difference in the number of particles in a pool, we know there's got to be more energy in a pool. But if you were to take the average speed of those, uh, the coffee is going to be the one that's going to win if you talk about the one at the higher temperature because the average speed of those is much higher than the coffee than the temperature. So the particles are moving faster in here, so this an average speed is much faster in here, but even though the average speed is much faster and is much slower in the pool, there's more particles uh, totally in the pool. A couple more instances. Let's talk about heat transfer. If you have two particles or two substances, and let's say Substance A is at a higher temperature than substance B, so substance A is hotter. So if we put those two things together, we would see that heat, trans heat would be transferred from the hotter substance A to the cooler substance B. We see this if you put, uh, for example, if you're warm and put your hand on a piece of metal. Heat will be transferred, why wow, the metal feels cool, because heat is transferred from you to the metal. However, you put, put your hand on a hot stove immediately or something warmer, that, that uh, heat is going to be transferred to you. So we see many instances heat is transferred from the warmer object to the cooler object. 
Uh, now notice, remember, we're still talking about these terms, the term of Q. We're talking about these terms, we're talking about the term of Q. Q being heat and delta T, T being temperature. Now notice when we talk about specific heat, we've, the specific heat plays a role here. When you have a substance with a high specific heat, such as water, it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. However, if you have something with a very low specific heat, for example, if you look at iron here, metals typically have a much lower specific heat. It doesn't take a lot of energy to change that temperature. So the role of specific heat here is that it depends on the substance as you, add, as you transfer energy. So it's easier to transfer energy to a metal, but it, the metal also loses energy faster. The, the uh, substance such as water with a high specific heat, that's why we use it in calorimetry experiments, has a very high specific heat, so it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature. And so it's, it's going to take longer to do that and a and much more, uh, more greater amount of energy. So also going to do one sample problem here. And this is a sample problem that will help, help us with the lab. It's only one problem for, for today. And this is going to be a little bit different because usually we've had just factor labels where you've changed one thing. And, or we've gone through a series of factor labels where you've started with one thing on the top. Now this is going to be different because we're going to have a substance in the numerator and the denominator both. So here's our, our question. If we have 350 joules of energy were, that were transferred from 5 grams of water, what is the amount of energy in kilojoules per mole? So what you want to do is put whatever you're changing to kilojoules on the top and factor label that. And then moles, whatever we're changing to moles, will go on the bottom. So when we set this up, we're going to put 350 joules on the top of our factor label and 0.5 grams on the bottom of our factor label. That will be our first step. So what we want to do is change joules to kilojoules and change grams of water to moles. So the first step here. So the first step, we, want to we know there's 1,000 joules in a kilojoule, and so the, the joules cancel. And so now we've gotten rid of joules, and we, in essence, have kilojoules per gram. But we really want kilojoules per mole. So we have one more step. We want to get rid of grams. So we're going to need to put grams at the top here, and we want to change it to, and we want to put one mole at the bottom. And the, what goes here is going to be the molar mass of our substance, which is water. Now to do that, we're going to pick the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams. And now we, we see that joules have canceled, grams have canceled, and now we have the top, final two units, which is kilojoules per mole. And now we've done really a two-step factor label, but we've changed not only what's in our numerator, which is joules, but we've also changed what's in our denominator, which is grams. And it gives us a final answer of 12.6 kilojoules per mole. That's it. Thank you.